I am feeling inspired once again. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this look, which is inspired by Alice in Wonderland, slash the phrase, down the rabbit hole. What actually got me inspired to do this look is I started to read this huge, thick book. Which Urban Decay just sent to me, as well as all of their makeup inspired by the new movie that's coming out, but I started reading this book and probably like, Four pages in, which is the story of Alice in Wonderland and other stories, which I haven't gotten to the and other stories yet because over a thousand pages, but I started reading it in like the first probably few pages it said about Alice going into the rabbit hole, and as soon as I read about Alice going into the rabbit hole, I'm like, this look was born in my head. All the products that you say be listed somewhere around the video. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to contact me. I'm starting off by drawing nonsense all over my chest using an eyebrow marker. Don't worry about your outline looking like it was drawn like a three-year-old. It's totally fine. I'm just generally sketching what I want to be thrown into the rabbit hole as well as sort of outlining the checkers, which I ended up kind of doing differently later on anyway, so really do not worry about the outline, just the general placement of where you want things to go. And yes, I know my camera is kind of focusing in and out a little bit. At the time, I wanted to punch my autofocus into another dimension. I'm then going ahead and filling in all the floating objects that I have being sucked in. And I'm starting off by doing the playing cards, filling them in with a white body paint, then shading them using gray, dark gray, and black. When creating the illusion of something being sucked in, you want to keep the angles more narrow towards where it's being sucked in. So I'm then filling in the Queen of Hearts and the King of Spades using body paint, making sure that the top letters are bigger than the bottom letters. To fill in the teacup, I'm then going in with a light blue body paint, filling in the center using a white body paint because I wanted the middle of it on the inside of the cup to be white. I'm then shading the edges of the teacup using various shades of blue. To create the illusion that it's more inside of the cup, I'm then going in using gray and black eyeshadow to give the shading on the inside. I also went ahead and added a gold stripe using body paint and some white highlights. As well as the blue for the teacup handle. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it gold at the time, but I made it blue. To create the plate, I then went ahead and used white body paint and also shaded the handle of the teacup using various shades of blue. Of course, since we are shading absolutely everything, I used gray eyeshadow to shade the plate and then also gave it some gold trim. Moving on to the potion bottle, I went ahead and filled it with a purple potion, which is in reference to Alice Madness Returns, and first filled it in using a light purple, then went in using a darker purple to shade and some white to give it some highlights. Creating glass things is always one of my favorite things to do. I don't know why, so you're gonna fill it in using white body paint, and then tap it so the color is not so bright. Go ahead and shade it a little bit using some gray eyeshadow, and then you can go back in using that same white, but don't tap it out, and it'll create highlight. You can also then outline the bottle to make it look like it's clear. Fill in the cork using various shades of brown. To create the drink me tag, I went ahead and gave it a white string, then filled it in using pink body paint, went back in using white body paint to highlight it. To shade the bottom of the tag, I went ahead and used some of the Urban Decay palette with the various pinks on the bottom. It seems like a lot of steps to explain, but it's really not once you're actually painting. For the pocket watch, I went ahead and used the exact same technique as the bottle where I applied the white body paint down and then tapped it, added white highlights, the little hands using black body paint, and then gold around the watch. I also went ahead and shaded the watch a little bit using some black body paint. To create the cookie, I first laid down a mix of various shades of brown body paint, a mix of tan and a little bit of yellow to make it look baked. In reference to the Disney cartoon of Alice in Wonderland, I went ahead and gave it white icing. And to make that icing stand out, I also gave it some light blue highlights as well as some white highlights. And then filled in the Eat Me icing using red body paints and a little bit of white in reference to the Disney movie. Now when I got to this teapot, I'm like, you know what? I don't like this teapot. I don't want the teapot. So I did not paint the teapot. Instead, I went ahead and filled in Cheshire's tail. I first layered down some pink body paint, then light purple body paint. Of course, I made it nice and fluffy. And then went in with various shades of pink and purple eyeshadows to give it a little bit more fluff. And to give it some dimension, I also went ahead and shaded some areas using the Urban Decay's Alice palette shadows. On to the checkerboards. Of everything, trying to fill in the checkerboards using clean lines is what will be the most time consuming of this entire look. It probably took me about an hour to fill in 
all of these different checkers. Once you've completed the checkerboard pattern, you can then go ahead and fill in your rabbit hole using solid black. Taking gray and black eyeshadows, you can then shade around that entire hole to make it appear that it's sucking things in. For my face, I knew I wanted to keep it really creepy and just very simple. Yes, simple is a giant swirling checkerboard on my face, thank you. So I went ahead and filled in Cheshire's smile on my face using white body paints and a little bit of black and then did the same thing on my face that I did on my body. This time I did it going in the opposite direction and you can also draw on an outline of where your checkers are going to go and it's not going to be confusing because you do not have floating objects on your face. And finally, line your eyes.